Dear Lydia, a few days ago, I received your letter. My words cannot describe how overjoyed and moved I was, not only by the news of my granddaughter, but also by your warm words. I do not know how to thank you, sweet sister, for persevering, for not giving up on me, even as I gave you every reason to. Year after year, you stayed with me, patiently sending me news of my daughter, calmly waiting for me to emerge from this despair I had burrowed myself into. But believe me when I say, sweet sister, emerge I have. For years, I've longed for this epiphany, clinging to brittle hope I'd one day be capable of it. But I know now I've been weak, too weak to face the mistakes I've made, and I know I've made plenty. But seeing Violet's photograph, it overwhelmed me. In that instant, I felt like I had the strength to take on all my fears, face all my failings, as they did not matter anymore, not truly. All that mattered was my longing to see them. I had to see my granddaughter, see my daughter, hold her in my arms and, and tell her how sorry I was and how much I had missed her. Please, Lydia, well, I know it's a lot to ask, but I would like for you to extend an invitation to Rose and her family. There's a lot to discuss, and I've spent the last few days making the appropriate preparations. I even have a big surprise for Violet and Rose, which I'm certain she'd be thrilled to see. I hope I can meet my son-in-law as well. I have some explaining to do to all of them, so I hope they will grant me this opportunity to do just that. I shall await for your response in, in eager anticipation. Yours truly, Albert. Damn. Oh, he's got an old man hat. Bye. It's so wonderful to see you, Lydia. Let's take this slowly, Albert. It's been a long time. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. How is Rose? She is well, as is Violet. I told her that I had been in contact with you. And? Albert, you must remember that a lot of time has passed. She has been out of your life for years. You kept her out of your life. You might open the door to let her back in, but she is the one who must choose to walk through it. Yes. Of course, but surely she will want to see me soon. She knows I'm a changed man now. You will have to be patient, Albert. Violet doesn't know you. Henry doesn't know you. Nor does his family. Rose worries about this. Rose worries about many things. Motherhood is new to her. She wants to get things right. Of course. Of course. I understand. Patience. Against my better judgment, I did give her your letter, yes? Well, surely that helped. Well, she spent all night locked in the bathroom, sobbing. I hoped that she would feel better in the morning. Well, she looked composed again, so I asked her if she was ready to see you now. Do you know what she said? Not now, not ever. But, well, I explained in the letter. Well, losing Helen devastated me. It changed me. I didn't want Rose seeing me like that. Well, I know now that that was a mistake, that, that I needed to hold her hand to find the way out of the darkness, just as she needed to hold mine. Yes. I did read the letter, Albert. It was a good enough apology you elucidated. But it's not about you anymore, is it? 
It's not about your apologies, what you did or didn't do, said or didn't say. It's about Rose. It's about what she feels is best for her family. But... <sighs> yes. I suppose you're right. I know you want to be a dad. A granddad. But you have to give her time, Albert. You shut her out all those years ago. You lost a wife, but she didn't lose just a mother. She lost you too. I know. <sighs> Give it time, Albert. Time heals all wounds. But only if you don't pick at the scabs. Dear Lydia, you say Rose will come around sooner or later and that I should give her time, but how much time? I've missed Violet's first birthday already, and will I have to miss her second one also? I'm not a young man anymore, Lydia. You ask for time, but I fear time is something I'm running out of. I did not want to tell you this, as I did not want to alarm you, but I visited Dr. Knowles recently to get a pain in my chest checked. <coughs> And he said something is wrong with my lungs. Probably to do with the fumes from my machines in the workshop. But anyway, what I am saying is, time has never been on the side of this family. You will understand then why I feel I should take matters into my own hands at this point and come and see Rose as soon as possible. I, I appreciate why you feel she must be protected, but this is my daughter we're talking about and I would very much like to see her now. I have every faith that once I've had a chance to talk to her, all will be fine. You will see, Lydia. Just have faith in me, like you did all these years. Yours, Albert. Where do I go? Do I have to go up to bed? Dear Albert, I know this is extremely hard for you, but trust me when I say any other way would be much worse for everyone. And I still think it would be an awfully bad idea for you to show up here unannounced. No one knows how Rose might react. And being that she has requested your existence continues to be kept a secret from Henry. No one knows how he might react either. Especially if he feels Rose is threatened in any way. I am sorry about all this. Let us all be patient a while longer. Yours, Lydia. P.S. I am very sorry to hear the news Dr. Knowles gave you. I shall be visiting him soon to find out more. And I shall be visiting you as well. So do let me know if there's anything you need. Dear Lydia, how convenient that Rose and her family would be traveling to the sea on the day that I pay you a visit. What I am still trying to piece together is how you even knew when I'd be visiting. Is Mrs. Gladstone spying in on my movements on your behalf? Is that it, Lydia? I am writing to let you know that two can play at that game. I have very little left in my old age, but there is one thing I do have. That is time. They can't stay at the summer house forever. 
I will return, you can be sure of it. I will return and I will wait. Dear Lydia, I will get if Ernest wants to escort me away from the premises, he should have the decency to do it himself rather than send your groundskeeper to do it for him. And don't think I didn't see you rushing Rose away from the window. What exactly is going on here, Lydia? I thought you were on my side, but I am starting to believe that this is not the case. Dear Rosie, this is your father. You may be surprised to be receiving this letter. You may find it hard to believe it's genuine. Or maybe you already know I've been desperately trying to reach you. I'm really not sure what to think anymore. But either way, the fact of the matter is, is that I am. I am desperately trying to reach you. Dear Lydia, I am sorry I lost my temper and fabricated those ridiculous allegations. You are right. They were ridiculous, uh, and I am not sure what got in me. Dear Henry, you don't know me, but you will probably be very surprised to learn that for the past three years, you've been married to my daughter. Dear Ernest, you can't keep doing this. Do you think you are the only lawyer in town? You know who I am. You know who I've been. And you know the reach of my previous employer's network. Dear Violet, the fact I haven't contacted them. this is your grandpa. I make toys. I would love to show you some of the toys Dear I've Rose. made one day. I made many, many toys for many little Dear boys Rose. and many little girls. But my favorite little girl to make toys for was your mum. When she was little, I made lots of lovely toys just for her. Please, I've made them. why won't you let me see them? Just let me talk to her for a few moments and then I will disappear again if that's what you want. Dear Rose, I just wanted for you to be happy. Yours, Albert. <laughs>